For many people in the Bay Area, late September is all about the Indian summer. But if you're one of the 400,000 leather enthusiasts who are headed to San Francisco today, it's all about the Folsom Street Fair. And today happens to be the 25th anniversary of this fetish fest where you can get spanked, flogged, all for a good cause. So you might be wondering, what is Rhapsody doing here? Music. Let's hear it from Barn Iva. I think that this year it's been a better experience. It's been yeah. fun. Is, is it distracting that you know you look out and there's a bunch of naked people? <laughs> Not at all. I saw that every day growing up in Oklahoma. Well, I would think it would make you feel less nervous. You don't have to imagine people are naked. They just are. I don't want to see half the people naked that are naked. This is becoming like a trend. <laughs> we, we performed in front of a lot of naked women last time, and now it's like a lot of peens. So we're getting like both gender. I'm getting to the point where it feels weird if their clothes are on, I think, so, you know, San Francisco does that to you after a while. Do you ever get nervous before shows, or are you totally over that? I think it's like, it's good to have a little bit of nerves. I mean, it helps, like, get the uh, get your mojo going. Um, I don't think I get nervous, but then I realize after the fact that I've been running back and forth trying to find the same hairpin for, like, five minutes and stupid little things like that. But, yeah, there's, there's always a little excitement involved, I'd call it more so than, than you know, uncomfortable nerves. I think Lala is sort of like, um, it's like, all right, we live in San Francisco, and of course there's always that like, um, Northern California, Southern California rivalry, but I think in recent years, it sort of revealed itself through Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears and all the tragedy that's come from that, and just how much attention those people get, and maybe this song sort of talks a little bit about it. I got sick of, you know, all the headlines and reading all of that and Britney's just demise in front of our eyes. What's she doing better now? Love you, Brit Brit. Well, we're in the, the Muppets Take San Francisco. No, the other one. Oh, okay, that one. Um, it's Yes Man starring Jim Carrey and we're in a band with Zoe Deschanel, an amazing, talented musician, I might add, on top of everything else. And we're the band in the movie. We wrote uh, four original songs for the movie, performed it live. Jim Carrey in the audience, you know, no big deal. And um, it's coming out December 19th and we're really excited about it. Our CD was at Amoeba Music and Jonathan, the music supervisor, saw it there and they called us up and I don't know, we had a meeting with the director and it was really fun and we got along really well. And they, I think they were really busy or something because they just kind of gave us complete creative control over that whole, like, the whole concept. We did like two weeks in the studio with Zoe and we wrote four songs, uh, no, actually five, sort of. Four songs, in the, four songs in the cover. And we, basically, they put us up in a hotel, and we, we lived the L.A. lifestyle, so I should knock it. Well, not all the way. We were being creative and locked away in the studio and recording with Zoe and writing with Zoe and re, re, in the studio with Jonathan Carp, the amazing music supervisor, and then, and then you know, having the full Hollywood movie experience, being on the sound stage. We've played Spaceland several times, so to be in Spaceland and <laughs> playing a show with like cameras and weird and people running everywhere. It's amazing how many people it takes behind the scenes to do one scene, so no wonder there's billions of dollars going into all that crap. But this movie is not crap, it's good stuff. So what are your goals now? Like like what is making it or, or what what's kind of in the works right now? I think, oh, hi. I think that it's like, um, getting out and seeing the rest of the world. I mean, we have a US tour coming up in October that's going to take us all the way through November um, and we're getting to a lot of places we haven't gotten to yet in the Midwest and the South um, and then we have plans to go to Europe so I think it's really like taking the live show out 
and um, the exposure is really what we're looking for right now. We re recently recorded six new songs, so we are working on putting out an EP and a full length to follow in the new year. Uh, we are, we're doing a few select dates with Girl in a Coma, and then the rest of the dates we're actually just playing with local bands. It's like we're just so anxious to get out on the road that it's time to do it. Um, but Girl in the Coma has like, been an excellent band for us to tour with because they're super high energy and great songwriters. Do you have any sort of parting words or things, advice you want to give? Here we go. Uh, I think it's all about the love, right? And the energy. What would you What would you say about our performance? You've got some nice pipes. Oh, thank and good you. Good energy, and it got everybody moving. And I think that's the word I'd give for all the musicians out there. Good energy, stick together. It's not easy trying to do what you love and be an artist. So, I'm yep. proud of you guys, man. I want to be where you guys are. <laughs> I'm proud of us too. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just thanks for the opportunity as people like you that continue to spread the word, you know? And all you out there, Bon Iver love you. It's true. <laughs> <laughs>